welcome everybody to this episode of Really Dicey. And today we're talking to Craig Campbell uh, about his uh, successful Kickstarter of Good Strong Hands, the RPG. And let's just get into it. Uh, what exactly is Good Strong Hands? Oh, Good Strong Hands. Uh, it's a tabletop role-playing game about uh, port- you're portraying um, fantastic creatures in a magical world called reverie um, and fighting to save it from destruction at uh, the hands of a faceless malevolent thing just this force of destruction that's known as the void so uh, this sort of faceless thing that shows up in the world every couple centuries tries to destroy it um, and heroes must rise up to defeat it uh, and uh, that's uh, y- you are the heroes <laughs> for this time around to <laughs> to make sure that reverie uh, continues on. Good strong hands. Um, I have to ask, where did the title for this come from? Um, that is a blatant ripoff of the movie uh, from the movie The Neverending Story, where um, Rockbiter, the the massive stone kind of giant, at one point laments to Atreyu, our hero that he saw the nothing coming. He, he tried to fight it and he couldn't, even though he has these big, good, strong hands. And he kind of, he's saddened um, and, and remarks that, uh, you know, you, you would think that I could do something. They look like good, strong hands, don't they? Um, and, you know, in the game, the void, the, the, the entity that's looking to destroy this, that's just a renaming of the nothing. I mean, it's just <laughs> another word for that. Um, so there's, there's definitely influence from uh, Never Ending Story and then um, uh, movies like Legend and Labyrinth and Willow, The Dark Crystal, um, and, a, and a variety of others. Uh, the idea for this game, uh, what, where, did, where did the idea come from exactly? What made you decide, hey, I need to make this role-playing game? Well, I've told myself for some time that I probably wouldn't make a fantasy genre game unless I came up with like a really interesting hook um, and probably something that falls outside of the kind of mid-range sort of sword and sorcery, high magic or mid magic that's, that's very prevalent um, in the RPG realm there's a lot of there's a lot of games that do that sort of thing and it's like i I don't need to compete with those there's a lot of different games out there you can find all the variations that you're looking for so it was really just a question of like when i got inspired for something and i was watching legend Uh, i rewatched legend you know for many many years after i initially watched it and i found myself thinking wow there's like there's a game in here you could you like where 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 there's this dark force in legend it's 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 manifest in a in a kind of a devilish character called darkness that is um threatening to destroy the world because of some thing that happens in the movie without giving anything away um and then i realized you know there's a bunch of movies that are like that that are kind of nostalgic to me that i love from my childhood um my younger years there's you know never ending story and and so forth and i thought well there's a, there's an interesting hook. And so I just kind of started exploring the idea of it and, you know, bounced, or bounced the idea around with a few people, put together a very rudimentary rule set at one point and ran kind of that early alpha play test just to see if it seems to have any sort of legs to it at all. Um, and, uh, and then just kind of went from there. And to be honest, that's how a lot of my games <laughs> design, uh, you know, there's like that initial idea and I just, I, I put together just enough to just kind of give it a try. Um, and then, you know, the game itself might morph and change quite a lot from that, or it might not, it might be kind of like, Oh, this, this kind of works. Let's just refine it and build from there. So uh, like, as often happens with me, it's watching like uh, there'll be a TV show or a movie or something that I've watched and I'm like, Ooh, there's a game in there. What can I, what can I steal from here and tweak a little bit and make into a game? Character making. Um, mm-hmm. what, what type of characters can players expect to play uh, in this game? I know you mentioned, you know, your inspiration, uh, but um, in case people are wondering, like, what exactly? Right. Uh, I, I 
took the chance uh, a little bit of, you know, kind of like took a chance with, I didn't include, there's no dwarves, no elves, no halflings, no gnomes, no goblins, no bugbears, none of that. It's all. Okay. Well, thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> but the, 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 the nice thing about it is that it is filled with character types that you don't necessarily see a lot of in fantasy games. And oftentimes if you do see them, it's because it's the third character option book and they needed to fill it with 10 more character options. Sure. So you've got uh, brownies and pixies and tree folk and uh, wild kin and their imps. Um, and there's other thing, you know, there's uh, uh, red caps and stone kin, which are like big boulder people. Um, and the, the, there are humans, uh, but humans are not your traditional, like humans are everywhere kind of uh, race um, the, in, in good strong hands, humans are from earth. There are no, there are no humans uh, native to reverie. So uh, if you play a human in uh, good strong hands, you're playing a curiosity, like some, ah. uh, a character that people find kind of interesting or maybe a little scary. I was looking at your Kickstarter mm -hmm. and um, you mentioned that the, uh, the players have character books, uh, but two page little books. Um, and then you mentioned that the GM has story schemes. What's a story scheme? Um, it's a pretty term for like a two page adventure outline. Um, you know how the, a lot of adventures you can get that are, they're very, very detailed to give you all this kind of information. Um, good strong hands is built around the idea that the players and the GM are going to um, build this world together. So the game book doesn't come with a ton of uh, setting information in place. There's enough to kind of tell you what the world is like um, and to give you a baseline to work from. And so the idea with, with doing these uh, as two page story schemes, which is so that the GM doesn't have to go through a lot of lore, doesn't have to learn, you know, this whole big world. The players don't have to either. They can build it together. And then the GM has enough information in one of these story schemes to provide the basics of an adventure where here's the basic uh, kind of the background of what's happening. Here's what kind of kicks off the problem, describes what the characters need to do. And then it's filled with just inspiration on here's different types of NPCs they might run into, threats that they might run up against, interesting locations that can be part of this um, with some of those things given a little more depth. Um, but a lot of them are just uh, inspiration to just kind of work in there. Um, and then also it in, each one includes um, a series of questions that the, that the GM can pose to the players to help fill out some of the aspects of the world uh, and the story that's being told. Because there's, you know, there's a lot of flavor to a, a, a magical world that isn't necessarily going to drive the plot, but it's going to help kind of create a fun setting for that plot to to take place in and uh, these, the questions that are there as prompts for the GM to help the players and kind of uh, coax them into answering some of those questions and building the world with him or her. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm um, just curious, do you imagine that happening before the game or during the game? Um, well, it, it'll certainly happen a lot during the game. Cause th like okay. the idea is that you're kind of, um, exploring the world kind of session by session. So as you go, the characters might travel to different places and then you'll kind of decide what those places are in totality as you, mm -hmm. as you play. Um, you could also establish some core um, uh, bits and pieces about the world before you actually start playing. There's a section in the book that discusses um, session zero and having um, a discussion between all the players and the GM to kind of forge connections between the characters to establish a handful of kind of baseline things that we're going to say, okay, the world is this, this, and this, and then we'll build off of that. I was looking through the, um, the quick starter PDF uh -huh. uh, from, yes, from the Kickstarter page. And um, I was looking at some of the rules and I noticed uh, that the rules themselves are uh, customizable as well. Um, in the amount of, you know, points and things that you can give to stuff. So was that, um, was that part of your design philosophy in this game to make it uh, customizable? Well, there's, 
um, there's there's guidelines for starting with characters that are a little further, um, a little more advanced. Like it's, particularly if you're going to run a one shot or just a few sessions, it sometimes helps to just start with a character that has a little more capability, a few more abilities, um, so that you've got a little more to play with. Uh, there's uh, there's alternate rules for making the game family family friendly by removing some of the darker elements. There's some parts mm-hmm. of the game where the characters are, are are being tempted toward corruption and you know bad things can happen. You can kind of strip some of those things out and just handle a few things differently um, if you've got younger players that you don't want to kind of burden with that sort of thing. Um, and then there's also a what I refer to in the game as the intensity dial. Um, there's a series of tracks in the game that you, uh, you're, mark, you're marking checkboxes for different things. Um, and the longer it takes to fill up um, one of these tracks, um, the less intense the game is because it takes longer to kind of get to the thing that you're filling up the track for. So you can, there's guidelines in the game, in the book for shortening those tracks if you want a game that kind of chugs along a little faster and uh, allows characters to advance more quickly or tempts them into corruption and darkness um, more quickly um, and forces players to make hard choices about how they're going to avoid that. So I wanted a little bit of modularity in there because uh, people will house rule games anyway um so i figured i figured there's a handful of things that i can do that i'll just built into the game so like for somebody that wants to run a really dark and gritty quick like oh my god my character is you know on the on the brink of running uh you know falling into corruption um i'll i'll put a variation of the game where you can do that and then if you got a care a group that wants to play kind of a a more light-hearted game um there's alternate information you know kind of uh, ways you can tweak the rules um to account for that without changing the base mechanics. So uh, let's talk about the art a little bit about uh, in your books. Uh, what what direction did you want to? How, how did you d- direct the 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 art for this book exactly? It's 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 very interesting. It's a very uh, at which now hearing you talk about it, it has a very uh, fairy tale chai like flavor to it. Uh, could you expand on that? Yeah, um, and and that was very purposeful. Um, you know, I kind of tried to hit on the type of art you might see, um, or the look of things that you might see for those types of movies. Like you might see these kind of fantastical things, but with a hint of darkness in there. So, um, and it, it felt very fitting to make it very fairy tale like, and the, uh, the, the, the graphic design, um, goes along with that and, and complements the artwork for the cover. The idea was that it was going to look very much like a storybook. Um, so you've got like this green and gold with this nice border. And then there's this lovely um, illustration of, of some characters helping their friend and then, you know, the title. And, but there's like, you know, it's the, the icky muck that's pulling the character down in, in uh, you know, in, that, that the character is struggling against. And then in the background, there's this monster that's lurking in the woods watching them. So, um, you know, a lot of the artwork has a mystical kind of fairy tale look to it, but then a handful of the pieces also have this little bit of darkness. Um, I didn't, I didn't want to uh, overdo the darkness thing because then that's that starts to tell the backer, you know, the purchaser, the player, that oh, this is just a dark game, right? Right. Um, and it's not <clears throat> it's supposed to be kind of whimsical and fun, but with a little bit of darkness. Right. Right. Dark whimsical. <laughs> yeah, darkly <laughs> whimsical. Yeah. Uh, would you say this game is a? It, it's would you say it's easy to learn? Is it? Would you say it's rules heavy? Um, I would consider it rules light. Really, there's you've only got four traits that your character is going to be rolling. Um, the base me- there's there's not a whole bunch of subsystems. It's all pretty much the base mechanic. You're rolling d6s. There's uh, there's no math. It's just like how many successes do I have on the dice. Um, so, and once you strip out kind of the darker elements, I think it would work very well um, for a lot of younger players. And, um, you know, and this was even like before COVID and all this happened and everybody started playing more online, I was looking at like tr- making this game a, a game that would be easy to play um, online over Zoom or, or Hangouts or whatever. Um, the idea being that you've, you've got this game book, if you learn the, once you, once you know the rules, all the player needs is that two page character playbook. All the GM needs is that two page story scheme. Um, you're not looking up 
you know, a ton of different rules and there's not a whole bunch of source books and you don't have to worry about maps and minis and managing all of that sort of um, extra stuff. And there's nothing wrong with all of that. There are games that you can have a lot of fun with that, but this, like the, the, I wanted this game to be very online friendly where you can just get together and tell a story um, and just have a piece of paper in front of you and some dice. So I see that your uh, Kickstarter is fully funded. Um, Yay! Have, yes, yes. Um, any uh, any uh, stretch goals you're looking forward to? Um, well, we've gotten through two of them, which added more uh, more folk, as I refer to them, the different characters types that you can play, um, mm -hmm. and also more story schemes. So it's kind of fattening the book up and adding more options and things. Uh, right now, as we record, we're working toward... Um, a stretch goal that will uh, is one of those it's like maybe maybe the stretch goal that's going to make this ah. um, much more <laughs> online friendly um, is uh, if when we hit uh, what ten thousand dollars will will produce um, form fillable PDF character sheets for every playbook so you'll have oh. just like a thing that you can put on your computer or on your tablet you can check box all your little check boxes and you can put your stats in and kind of you know put your character description and fears and things in there um, and you don't even you won't need pencil and paper and it'll be that sounds great and Fingers work entirely 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 in the pdf so there'll be nice. you know 10 or 12 of those by the time we're done we just have to they're they're all the, the playbooks are all very similar but they'll be there's like little tweaks that has to happen to make you know each of them function properly sure, sure. Okay. If, uh, sort of a follow-up to Matt's question. Um, I know some some um, systems and companies you need to get multiple books, like D and D has the Player's Handbook, DMG, Play Mass Manual. This book will will have everything you need. You I don't, do we need to get anything extra to play with it? No. Uh, the idea would be that I, every every game I've done has been um, an all-in-one book. If you just get this one book, you can play the game. Um, all of the additional stuff will be just things that help. Um, if you want them, you can do it without that, like the form fillable PDF uh, character playbooks and everything. You can, you could, you could print out a piece of paper or just make some notes <laughs> and, keep, <laughs> and, you know, keep the, keep the playbook open in front of you and just have a few notes about what you've got going on. Um, you know, all the, all the uh, support material will be just that support. You know, it'll just help to streamline some things, but the, the book itself is all in one. Where can people find more information about good strong hands? Uh, well, right now, uh, while the Kickstarter is going on, you can go to uh, Kickstarter and search for Good Strong Hands. Um, there's uh, nerdburgergames.com, uh, which, uh, you know, has plenty of information on it right now and will continue to, uh, to build out from there after the Kickstarter is done. You can buy the games at drivethroughrpg.com. But right now, go to the Kickstarter because all the other games are, are available as add-ons, too, at discounts. Um, so if you if you like good strong hands, you can get some of the other stuff as well. Um, if you if you go to the website at the top on the main page, there's also a link there to uh, the Nerdburger Games Discord, which is a nice little community of people where I'm fairly active and kind of keep people apprised on everything that's happening behind the scenes. And I, that's where I go for play testers and all that sort of fun stuff. So if you like trying out uh, the early versions of new games, that's a good place to go. All right. Excellent, Sounds excellent. Good. Well, well, everyone, go to that website right now. I'll put a, the link in the description below. Um, thank you, Craig, for coming and hanging out with hanging out with us again and talking about games. Um, I can't wait to see this game myself in my hands. <laughs> and um, everyone out there, thank you for watching. Be safe and have a good day. <laughs>